I want to discuss a topic that may be hard to recognize, but it's incredibly important, emotional abuse. It's subtle, it's pervasive, and it's time to shed light on it. I'll be making a series of videos on this topic, so follow me or subscribe to see them all. Emotional abuse can be so discreet that we might not even realize it's happening. But make no mistake, just because there are no visible bruises, the damage is real and should never be underestimated. I'm Sintla Eberson, a post-traumatic growth specialist with a passion for teaching resilient skills in all aspects of life. Because I work with trauma all the time, I've learned firsthand how to work through it and emerge stronger, happier, and fortified for any other adversity that may come. And that is why I want everyone to not only be able to identify emotionally abusive behavior, but also learn how to respond to it. Now, you may wonder, how can something so subtle be considered abuse? Emotional abuse isn't always a one-time occurrence. It often involves repetitive actions that systematically undermine your dignity, leaving you feeling vulnerable and defenseless. It can happen in various relationships with a partner, a parent, a child, a sibling, a friend, a colleague, or anyone. It's important to understand when certain actions can be regarded as emotional abuse. It's crucial to recognize patterns, frequency, and of course, the context in which these behaviors occur. One common tactic is blame, but when does it cross the line into emotional abuse? It's about consistency, intensity, and the impact on the victim's well-being. If blame becomes a pervasive theme happening, happening frequently and in various contexts, it's a red flag. When any problems in your day-to-day -day living somehow always end up being your fault, even things you have no control over. For example, when you run out of milk, it's because you don't do proper grocery shopping. Or if the children are late for school, it's because you didn't get them out of bed early enough. Or when your partner neglects their duty, it wouldn't have happened if you reminded them. You see what I mean? Let's explore this through other real life scenarios and let me offer you some suggested responses. But before we do, I need to say this. Emotional abuse can be insidious and victims often find themselves in challenging situations. Knowing what to avoid and how not to respond is essential for maintaining your mental well-being. The first pitfall is falling into the trap of constantly defending yourself. Emotional abusers often manipulate situations to make you feel at fault. And while it's natural to want to explain your actions, constantly defending yourself can actually perpetuate the cycle. Another pitfall is engaging in arguments and trying to convince the abuser that they are wrong. Emotional abusers are skilled at deflecting responsibility and manipulating conversations. So arguing may actually escalate the situa situation and lead to further emotional distress. So be careful of that. And unfortunately, victims often internalize the blame, believing they deserve the treatment they're receiving. It's important to recognize that emotional abuse is never justified and you are not to blame for someone else's actions. Emotional abusers may attempt to also isolate their victims from friends and family, and falling into this trap of isolation can intensify the emotional impact on you. So maintaining connections with a support system is crucial if you find yourself in such a situation. Do set clear and firm boundaries. Establish what behavior is unacceptable and communicate your limits assertively. Don't play the blame game. Avoid getting entangled in a cycle of blame. Instead, focus on addressing the issue at hand calmly. But reach out for support. Share your experiences with a trusted friend or a family member 
or a counsellor if you need to, who can provide guidance and understanding. And very important, don't internalise unwarranted criticism. Remember that emotional abuse reflects the abuser's issues, not your worth. Prioritise self-care. If you're in a relationship where you find yourself in such an abusive situation where you are always blamed for things. Engage in activities that bring you joy and relaxation to counteract the emotional toll that it takes on you. And please remember, don't isolate yourself. Stay connected with loved ones who can offer you emotional support and perspective on the situation. So recognizing these pitfalls and adopting these healthy coping mechanisms empowers victims of emotional abuse to break free from the cycle. You're not alone and there is support available. So let me continue by giving you a couple of practical uh, real life examples. And at the same time, I'm going to offer a suggested way for you to respond to it. Let's say, for example, your child forgets their lunch and immediately you are blamed. If you were a more responsible parent, this wouldn't happen. The solution is to respond calmly and assertively by saying something like, I understand your concern, but let's work together to find a solution for the future, shall we? Another example is, imagine your teenager blames you for their low grades. If you were more involved in my studies, I would do better. Communicate openly and say, I'm here to support you, but let's find a way to tackle this issue together so that you can do better. We often find sibling rivalry, and it's natural to a certain degree, but when blame becomes a weapon, it's destructive. When the one child says to the other, you always ruin everything for me, for example, the solution is to encourage open communication between them. Let's talk about how we can support each other instead of pointing fingers. And another example is in the workplace, where blame can really poison relationships. This project failed because of your incompetence. If somebody says that to you, it's important to address the issue professionally. Let's have a constructive discussion to understand what went wrong and how we can improve in the future. That is a calm and assertive suggestion to make. What about friends blaming each other? Because friends can hurt each other too. If you were a better friend, I wouldn't feel so alone. The solution again would be to express your feelings and communicate openly. I value our friendship and I'd like us to talk about how we can support each other better in the future. So there are some practical examples. Remember, by avoiding these pitfalls and embracing healthy responses, you can reclaim your strength and your resilience. Recognizing emotional abuse is the first step. If you witness someone being emotionally abused, be their ally, stand up against the blame and offer support. This way, we can create a community that fosters empathy, understanding and growth. It's never too late to break the cycle of emotional abuse and to build a healthier, more resilient relationship. Stay compassionate, Stand up for one another and let's continue growing together. I'm Cynthia Eberson and I invite you and your family to get up and grow with me.